Do you want to know how to have true freedom? With just three verses, one big concept emerges. This concept has changed my life and it's revolutionizing the way I think. Now sometimes I still struggle to fully apply this to my thinking, but having this understanding has enabled me to realize the root of many of my issues and how they manifest in different forms. You see, having the wrong perspective of things in my life has caused much hardship. And just by reframing and correcting those distorted perspectives, I've gained much freedom. Here's an obvious example of how distorted perspectives of reality can cause very significant health problems. Imagine with me that you're on a walk through the woods, trudging through the snow, and you round the corner and you see a very large polar bear. Your sympathetic nervous system kicks in, your adrenals produce adrenaline and cortisol, and your blood pressure rises, your respiratory rate rises, your pupils dilate. You are now considering fight or flight. That would be quite an intense moment, to say the least. But this physiologic response takes place for many people far too frequently. Instead of the trigger being a polar bear, it's actually a teddy bear. Is it possible that you have some distorted views of reality? I know I did. Imagine chronically seeing teddy bears as polar bears. Imagine what that would do to your blood pressure and how anxious one would be. At any moment, you could become face to face with a real life bear, or so you perceive. Maybe consider in your own life, what am I perceiving inaccurately? Ask several trusted individuals to help you pinpoint the perceived polar bears. Imagine the peace one would have if he realized that the bears in his life were really harmless teddy bears. The Bible speaks of true reality that we often get backwards. Remember those three verses I spoke of at the beginning? Let's look at those now. Matthew 8:20 being the first. And Jesus said unto them, The foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Jesus recognized that he owned nothing. The second verse is here, John 5.30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. Jesus recognized that he could do nothing of himself. The third verse is right here, 1 Corinthians 6.19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Jesus also recognized that his body was the temple and that he wasn't his own. Let's analyze this more deeply. Jesus recognized that he owned nothing. He understood that all the silver and the gold and the cattle, everything belongs to God. He was simply a steward of what God gave him. No one could take anything away from Jesus because he didn't own anything. Jesus recognized that anything he truly needed, the Father would provide. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So if people tried to take anything from Jesus, who were they actually stealing from? God. Jesus didn't have to suffer any personal loss when somebody stole something. Neither do you. As long as we're being faithful stewards of the talents he's given us. Jesus recognized that he could do nothing of himself. So when somebody said, Oh, that's an ugly chair you made, Jesus. He recognized that God gave him the ability to make that chair. God gave him the talent. God gave him the knowledge to make that chair. And that he could do nothing on his own. So he had no need to take those negative comments personally. Because he was simply being faithful with the talents he had. And the rest he left to God. Jesus also recognized that he wasn't his own. Anything that was done to him was actually ultimately being done to God the Father. Matthew 25, 40 says this, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So when others insulted or assaulted Jesus, he genuinely felt sorry for them, not himself because he understood that they were literally hurting God, and at that time, not connected to the source of life, which means they were dying. God wants us to choose life. 
So you see, having distorted thoughts, such as we own things, or that we can create things of ourselves with our own power, or that we own ourselves, this all makes it so that whenever anyone says something, or damages, or steals, or, or undervalues something of, of us, we suffer personal loss. And we simply are not capable of handling this. No wonder it's so damaging and hurtful. The first commandment is found in Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. In thinking that we can create of ourselves, that we own ourselves, or that we own belongings, and we're not simply just stewards of what God's given us, when we have these distorted thoughts, we are actually thinking that we are God. And we're breaking the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God is pleading with you and with me to recognize these powerful truths, to realize the freedom that comes when we understand the reality that the Bible speaks of, and, and not to be enslaved by our own distorted thoughts.